I'll be the one mainly commentating this run, providing some, some English uh, commentary. Uh, this is Earthbound 90% All Photos, uh, which is a really, really cool category. It's evolved a lot over the years. Um, it started off as just something we kind of thought was a cool idea, and it's turned into this category that gets to show off all these really niche uh, Earthbound glitches that have uh, especially recently been discovered. Um, but before we get into any of that, I think we probably are just good to I'll just try and start, right? So I guess, uh, I'll, let's give a countdown, Octo, and then on go, you can start. Um, I'm okay. Okay. All right, sounds okay. good. Uh, three, two, one, and go. So Octo is going to be starting here. This first section of the game, obviously, if you're familiar with Earthbound, uh, it's just these uh, nice introductory sequence. You may have already noticed that uh, Octo has named all the characters uh, a single letter. That isn't just to save time because it takes you know a certain amount of time for a character to be printed uh, onto the screen. That is because Earthbound 80% All Photos is an extremely uh, glitched category, very manipulated. Um, and so Octo is going to be doing some manipulation here from the get-go. Um, and we get to see something that has always been known, I think, even among casual fans. Uh, which is the ability to skip the Starman Jr. fight. Whether or not we land this manipulation, manipulation is very difficult to land. So, um, worst case scenario, I believe there are backups because we do need our, our stats to be a certain way for at least the beginning uh, fights. The rest of the manipulation on the run that we're going to be doing later uh, still requires us to basically be within the same stat range uh, for the most part. You can see uh, the I. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the chat, they're saying about seventy percent of the run is manipped. That is, that is about accurate, I would say. Uh, and and then the the other thirty percent of the run that isn't manipped, spawns are turned off through the entirety of it. So it's like you kind of just big chilling through the entire run. But Octo's here is just going to be hitting just these base story triggers first. Um, you might be wondering how RNG manipulation works in something like Earthbound. Um, Earthbound, you kind of have free movement. It's not like a very tile-based RPG. Uh, so there's there's certain things that affect the the internal RNG factors of the game. So anytime a character of text is printed on the screen, RNG is updated by one, which is why our characters have to be named a very specific, uh, specifically one character of text. Um, that way. We don't get any extra RNG updates that we aren't accounting for. You could hypothetically route something that accounted for more, but it would be a completely separate uh, route that you'd have to manually, you'd have to like kind of trial and error your way through over time. So it's generally uh, not worth it, especially just because it loses time. And yeah, the, the any percent all photos didn't used to be. Um, as heavily manip, there was manip uh, here and there and stuff like that. We, we, especially, th there's a lot of glitches in, the, in that we, we walk out of bounds and stuff like that. But there wasn't a lot of manip. I think when the f category first dropped, we had like Kraken manip. But Kraken isn't even a re required fight for the run now. Uh, and that's thanks to people who have rerouted it like Classic James. And now the Japanese community has been really has done a lot of work for not just any for all the categories really any percent all photos being one of them there's just a lot of really optimized manipulation that the, the japanese community has come together and worked together on and created a lot of really impressive stuff uh, and they're still working on it like they're they still updated certain fights here and there in the uh, in the route you know, as recently as a month ago or less even than that so it's, it's really cool to see everyone working together and, and trying to come up with uh, like the best possible uh, route for these manipulation runs. So the the manip portion is about to sort of short, uh, sort of show its first uh, real benefits here. The main thing, obviously, is that if if you know 
uh, what's going to be ahead of you, you can just avoid any enemies. You can just manipulate it so there are no enemies. Um, we are going to be doing that for the most part. We're going to take uh, two fights on purpose. One is to lower our HP, and then one is to death warp off. So here you're going to see uh, Octo move a very specific way, and you're going to see as well that Octo is opening and closing the menu. That is to move RNG forward. That's another thing that, that uh, affects the internal RNG. Every time you open the menu and then close the menu, uh, it, it, it changes the RNG. And so this crow here, we're going to get red swirled by it. This is part of the manipulation. We're trying to let this crow do a little bit of damage to us. That way, in the next fight we take, we will uh, very easily die. This three experience is basically not important. The main part of the crow fight that is important is the, the amount of damage you take. And then there will be more manipulation here. We're going to get a dog to spawn very close. Here he is. You see Octo is pulling this dog extremely, extremely... Uh, close and we're going to keep this dog on screen while uh while we get buzz buzz normally what happens is as soon as you get buzz buzz the game will turn off uh will turn off spawns uh what that means is that nothing will spawn if you like if you were to walk towards a spawn plate where normally enemies would spawn like they just won't spawn anymore but the game doesn't like clear what's ever on screen so this dog is the only thing remaining really of of this of this new state of you know the spawns are no longer on so we're, we're using this dog here to our benefit we're going to get buzz buzz and then we're going to death warp off of this dog uh, and what that does is it puts us back in our home which is right after which is just a, just ahead of where starman jr is so you get to skip the starman jr fight completely uh, and this actually saves a chunk of time uh, even 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 though you take the time to get into these two fights, the Starman Jr. fight is just it's just long, and especially because you have to walk down the hill as well. And here we see the dogs gonna hit us. And the nice part about Earthbound is that when you do die, you can say yes to respawn, and the game saves your progress. Um, that everything you did, all the story triggers you, and stuff you did, it'll save all that progress. It just puts you back at your last save. And the game automatically saves when you pick up uh, the phone there in, in your home. So we just skip Starman Jr. So there's no Starman Jr. in this fight, in this category. Uh, it's one of the, the benefits of these glitched categories, uh, is we just skip the Starman Jr. fight. And manipulation has not ended yet. You might think, okay, well, they got past Starman Jr. Uh, what else is there to manipulate? Well, we also have to get out of Onet as well. In the past, uh, normally we didn't have a way to get out of Onet that didn't involve beating Onet uh, in its entirety. So, you know, fighting all the bosses in Onet and then getting the barricades removed manually and then walking out. But uh, sometime in 2019, it may have been late 2018, uh, Japanese taster by the name Pirohiko, uh, or maybe Pirohiko was just the Winter's Cliff skips, but some tasters uh, came up with the concept of uh, a sprite overload, which is what we're going to be doing here shortly. I know Pirohiko found both. Thank you for the, uh, the knowledge check. So, uh, what we're going to be doing here is, we're still manipulating, we're going to be doing a sprite overload to get out of uh, Onet. Basically, I can try and explain this as best I can after it's done, because there's a lot of things to be paying attention to. Now, I think uh, manipulation uh, dropped here, which is not an issue because we can uh, either, either manipulation dropped here or we don't have manipulation that involves getting the town map as well. Uh, but it doesn't matter because you can save and, and then reset your console and it resets RNG to a known value, which is a thing you will be seeing a lot of in this category. Um, you'll be seeing a lot of resetting in general, and that's just to, to get RNG back to 
you know, essentially its starting point. It starts at zero, and then when the title screen comes up, then it hits some hexadecimal values and stuff like that, so. This $32 here, I believe, is to buy a skip sandwich in uh, Tucson, which is where we're heading to shortly. So we're gonna see Octo save here. As soon as you hit record, that's when the game actually uh, saves your data, so that's, that's the earliest you can reset. Get used to this little fanfare, because you're gonna be hearing it a lot. Uh, and now we reload it and we know what RNG is at. So we can create uh, RNG manipulation based on pre pretty much from any phone uh, in the game to any point. And uh, we're going to be opening this menu. The goal here is to get as many enemies on screen as possible. You see a lot of sharks up here. Now pay attention to this truck. All right, the truck's gone. It's now barricade. And uh, that barricade that was normally in the way is now completely gone because the truck took the place of the barricade. So I'll do my best to explain exactly what happened there because there was a lot of things happening at once. But basically, the game has a maximum table of sprites and objects that it can load. I believe the number is like 22. But uh, I could be confusing that with a different game. It's something in that range, though. Um, what happens is that each enemy takes up one, one slot in, in that table. The truck does as well. Each one of those barricades does as well. Those cops there that you can talk to as well. So there's a bunch of stuff on screen there. And what happens is that you spawn so many enemies that the game, that you have exactly one over. Uh, you try and load one too many things that the game could potentially load. So what the game does naturally is it goes, okay, well, there's too many things trying to be loaded on screen. So what I'm going to do is remove the first one that was loaded and replace it with the one that's about to be loaded. So the first thing that was loaded was that truck. Uh, and the barricade was the last thing that you tried to load into memory. So we replaced the barricade and swapped it with the truck. Uh, and it didn't really check to see about the position of the barricade or anything like that. It just swapped them. So now that barricade was no longer there, which allowed us to walk through. And that is the sh that's the best possible explanation I can give for that. You see Octo here uh, trying to shove uh, himself into this little cliff. Uh, these are these are probably well known even among casual fans. These uh, these cliff skips. I think most people know that you can use skip sandwiches to move through these cliffs and and traverse this you know geography a little bit. Um, that first one doesn't require a skip sandwich, but this one uh, does require a skip sandwich. And so Octo is looking for a very specific uh, lineup there uh, before he used a skip sandwich. And once he gets that lineup, then it's just a simple matter of you just like tap left, or you do like up left, and then right. Oh, like we, you just kind of we we have certain lineups there that that work well for us. And thankfully. Uh, Octa did not get the the very low percent chance, but still still chance of enemies being right on top of you as soon as you enter three, uh, which at the moment Octo is level one, so uh, he would die. Very likely he would die, I should say. Um, and now we're in three with Ness at level one by ourselves, and we still have a little bit to go. And you you know. In case you have forgotten, this is all photos, and, and we haven't grabbed any photos yet. We've actually walked by a couple that were pretty easy to grab. Um, that's because we're going to be back there later anyway, uh, and it's just more convenient to grab those photos then rather than now. So right now we're we're mostly doing a lot of a lot of setup that we're that is required for the run, uh, and and the setup requires going to Winters. So we'll be heading to Winters uh, shortly here. Nice little fun, uh, fun visual, visual bug here. The game doesn't expect you not to have Paula here. So you see, we have Paula all of a sudden, uh, but Paula hasn't been added to our party, so we don't actually have Paula. We will get her. Uh, what happens after Winters is that when you land from the Skyrunner. The game gives you back Ness and Paula um, because it assumes that you had them because it does not assume that you 
did a sprite overload and, and then cliff skipped your way into three. Uh, but that is how we, we will be acquiring Paula is, is just through the game kind of giving it to us for free. Here in Winters, <laughs> a ghost, Paula. Here in Winters, uh, also discovered by Pirahiko, Winters used to be a thing for uh, glitch categories that we would have to get Bubble Monkey, ride on Tessie, uh, and then we, we had Manip for Brick Road. Uh, and Pond Cave. And then we would do it like that. That's a lot slower. Uh, but we had no way to get onto the cliffs of, of Winters without the teleport spell. Uh, until about late 2018 or early 2019, uh, the aforementioned Tasser Pirohiko uh, found out basically that in the movement calculations of this game, when you move in cardinal directions, there's a rounding error that happens. Um, and normally this wouldn't... Normally this only really translates into sometimes when we're moving in cardinal directions, uh, your character will move two pixels forward instead of one, because it rounds up to two. That's normally all it would really have an effect on. But when you're using a skip sandwich, all of a sudden, there are, you know, multiple. <laughs> there's multipliers added to, to your speed and stuff like that. Uh, and so when you have a skip sandwich, that rounding error all of a sudden starts uh, starts affecting starts affecting things a lot more. And so what happens is that you, you can will be continuously hitting uh, left and up against the cliff face, and it, the game will continuously, with that rounding error, uh, keep updating our sub pixel uh, sub pixel value, which is a real thing. It's hard to explain, but there's good resources out there to learn what subpixels are, if you're curious. Uh, it will eventually keep updating our subpixel value enough that it that once it, it, it does it enough that it, it updates our actual x and y value uh, and allows it in a, and puts us on the other side of the cliff. Um, normally, in like an any percent run, which is just the pure glitch category, beat guy gets as fast as possible. Um, we do not do what Octo is doing here, which is to uh, repair the broken spray can. Uh, but in Photo Percent, we have a couple extra clip skips we gotta do. So we, we at this point, we do have to uh, repair the broken spray can because when you repair the broken spray can, it turns into the can of defense spray, which sells for $250 instead of like like 93 or something like that otherwise may might be less though so you get a lot more money from from selling the Canada defense spray versus the broken spray can uh, and also uh, this is how you trigger this photo from spawning this is how you trigger this photo to spawn and this is our first photo of the run so say fuzzy pickles everyone uh, there are 32 photos total so we still got plenty more to go. And and that's that's a common theme that comes back to play uh, in in photo percent, uh, which is, you know, you think that we, I had mentioned pre previously we can walk out of bounds, which is what we'll be doing after winters. Um, you might think you just walk out of bounds to every single photo and just get them all, scoop them up all right quick, walk to Geigas, beat them up, and then we can call this over. But the thing is, a lot of photos don't spawn until you do certain story triggers. So, for example, that one in front of the tent is only possible when you sleep inside the tent and then they, it, it preps like the Tessie sequence and stuff like that. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of photos that work very similarly in the sense that you need to you need to trigger them through, through the game's story. Uh, so now Octo, with the extra money from the Canada Defense Spray, is buying three Skip Sandwich Deluxes, and we're doing a safety save here for marathon purposes, um, because Octo has to get these uh, Cliff Skips in one sandwich, which is not always uh, reliable to do. In the case of this spawn here, Octo here is not looking for this dog, looking for a crow or nothing. Crow is, is, is the best possible thing 
dog isn't great. But you pull the dog far enough and then you're okay here. So now Octo is going to be lining uh, himself up into this cliff. He's looking to try and get stuck against this wall. And now we're going to be moving up and left. And a, lo a lot of it. We're, we're doing it. We're doing it a lot. I hope you. I hope you don't like like your D-pad surviving if you're running this category because there's not long left for the for the D-pad after you, you're doing this. But as you can see now, Octo is on the other side of the cliff uh, and is now kind of walking in, not quite out of bounds, but very close to out of bounds <laughs> uh, area. Um, and the game still considers, even though Earthbound is all one giant map, uh, collision still works normally. So that that like ocean of blue or whatever, like that's technically a, a different part of our, a part of the map. And if you were to be able to walk on walls, you could potentially go over there and see and and be in that area. But uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. And then this, this cliff skip here, Octo is looking for a very specific lineup. This one is just a normal cliff skip with the, uh, a very specific lineup that Octo uses. And there's a photo here in Brick Road. The reason why Octo uh, went in, back out, and then back in again is because when you walk out of Brick Road from inside of Brick Road, it tells the game, okay, they're done with Brick Road. Let's get rid of all the enemies. Uh, but if you walk into Brick Road, even from the other door, the enemies are there, and we don't want to fight these enemies. There's no point. Uh, they would also kind of beat us up, because we, we had to sell uh, our pop gun in order to uh, afford one of the uh, skip sandwiches. And then this cliff skip uh, does not require a skip sandwich. And Octo just nailing them. Uh, and then there's one more that we'll be doing here to get into the lab. There is a photo up there. And I'm just looking for a very specific lineup here. Looks like he got it. Yeah, and there is a photo right here in front of Stonehenge. So before we enter the lab, we're going to grab this photo. So we've got the brick road and, and this. This is all the winter's photos. So everyone say Fuzzy Pickles once again. I agree, Crimson. This guy, Daniel, commentating, not great. Uh, all those, so this is all the Winters photos. Very nice stuff to Octo. And then we'll be talking to Dr. And Donuts and then saving on the phone. For people who have watched Glitched Runs, this is a very familiar site. This is generally the start of, of the madness because we're going to be entering into Threed and we will begin our descent into walk into out of bounds madness as it were and uh i'm very very thankful that uh Elia posted the map in the chat because it is a very very good uh way to keep in mind of like why octo is going here and saving here because it soon becomes the the, the quickest way of travel ends up being which phone is closest to this city on this giant map uh, because we're going to be able to out of bounds at any point in the run. Uh, and it, there's a couple different reasons for that and I'll explain them a little bit closer to when we get there. Uh, I'll have to explain first the initial glitch and then what Octo will then be doing thereafter. Uh, but we do get a nice little break here with the Skyrunner cutscene. We do have to watch the entirety of the Skyrunner cutscene. The nice part about photo percentage, so we've gotten three so far. There's 32 photos total. I think one is given to you for free, which is from beating guidance. Um, so we still have to get uh, all the rest of the photos. Uh, the main reason now, the main reason it's taken all of this prep here so far, uh, you know, because we can walk out of bounds. What's what's stopping us from walking out of bounds as quickly as possible? Well, this is as quickly as possible. The main method, the main reason we can walk out of bounds 
has to do with the way Earthbound handles stairs. Specifically, excuse me. Whew. Right. Uh, specifically, what happens uh, with the games uh, on stairs is when when you are first getting onto stairs. Imagine the game is attaching you to like a rail system. So when you're first first getting onto the stairs, as you enter the stairs, the game sort of kind of guides you along. Like, it'll force move you onto the stairs to be like, okay, now you're attached to the stairs. Now you're moving up and down the stairs. And there's there's this, that exists at both the top and the bottom of the stairs. When you first are getting onto the stairs, and when you're getting off of the stairs. But, uh, during that initial guidance of the game, kind of automatically putting you onto the stairs, if a text box were to interrupt that animation, uh, well, it turns out that collision is not active at all while the game is guiding you. Because in order to help, in order for the game to help better guide the, the player onto the stairs, it briefly disables collision. Uh, and if you have a text box interrupt that animation, then you can just keep collision turned off for the entirety, for as long as for as long as you theoretically want. The moment you enter a door, collision enters. Uh, sort of works again normally. Um, and so you might be wondering, what's well then? How what what's a what text box is gonna interrupt that? Because you can't just like open the menu during it. The game has to auto like a, an automatic text box that the game uh, does is is the thing that's gonna interrupt it. So you see Octo here getting into a red swell fight with a zombie and a zombie possessor. So this is all manipulated. You might be like, well. Two, two, two kids are dead. What's going on here? That's that's on purpose. This ghost here is is a nice visual cue that we use um, for timing for the timing of of getting onto the stairs and getting it cold, which is the important thing, is is the main way we will interrupt getting onto these stairs. So when you have something like a cold or poison. If you are low on if, uh, HP and the game does the tick down, it alerts you, hey, listen, your character's about to die here, buddy. Um, and that's what, in, that, that text box is what we use to interrupt getting onto the stairs. Now, you may have noticed we walked out of bounds and all of a sudden now we're in summers. And you even saw very briefly that like, Octo was walking into the dark void of the Out of Bounds, and then all of a sudden it turned into the Summers Hotel. Well, Octo has the town map that he picked up back in Onet, um, and you can just open that with the X button, and you can close it very quickly. So you didn't even really see the map uh, open up, really. But what that does is, if you have the town map or you use the soundstone, what it does is it'll then uh, once it it loads back in and out, it will load the tile set and collision will work normally for that area. So we'll be doing it again here shortly. You notice here, um, once again, we, uh, God, there's so much happening here. There's so much happening here. It's so much, it's so much to go over. So we, we used the stairs glitch on the bottom here. We got to Foresight. We walked into Foresight. And then, as soon as we walked into Foresight, um, the game snapped us back into summer. This is probably the hardest thing to explain. But one thing to note here before I get into explaining that is that Octo has copied his save file. Octo is a machine, I agree. Um, so we, we got the stairs glitch getting onto the bottom of the stairs um in summers that that allows us to walk out of bounds octo went to foresight and walked into foresight the purpose for this is to get the foresight teleport and then as soon as we walked into foresight what happens is that when you do the stairs glitch the game creates a horizontal line from where from where you created the uh from where you did the stairs glitch and depending on whether or not you did it uh while trying to descend down the stairs or ascend down the stairs or, or ascend the stairs from the bottom or from the top, you know what I mean? 
uh, the game will it creates a horizontal line that says anything above or below, depending on which one you do. If you were to be above it, if you were to be in this zone, I'm going to snap you back to these stairs because that's just generally how it works. I don't know why that's how it worked, but it is. So as soon as he entered Foresight, because uh, he technically entered the Foresight tunnel room and then walked into Foresight, which is a different area, and then the game was like, well, hold up. This horizontal line still exists, so it snaps him back to the stairs instantly. Um, and then in the meantime, now we've picked up two two more photos. I think it's just one more photo. But we have to do this Delam sequence. Um, we out of bounds to Delam. Fun fact, as you were about to see, uh, the game does not care if you are uh, poo or not during this. So we're gonna we're gonna turn into poo very briefly here. And yeah, you don't need to talk to that guy. But you can just start climbing the rope. My favorite part about this is the is the the tiny ghost just kind of chilling there. He just has he just has his his dumb little ghost face. You know, like it, right now, it's lined up with like the cliff face. Even kind of looks like the top of a pokeball. So this is a nice little cutscene segment. There is a photo in Delam, which is why we're doing this. We're not just doing this to get poo, um, although we are going to get poo. Although it's it's been let me make sure. We might be getting poo later. And we might just be doing this to, uh, because this is required to get the photo to spawn. Um, but what might be happening here is that we're gonna use the coal to then death warp back to a, a phone and then do some other stuff. Manip to have roll only give 26 rather than all HP. So we might we might be just letting the, the cold kill us here. Just, just, in, uh, just in time enough to complete the meditation sequence. Yes, that is, in fact, what's happening. So we'll be back to Delam later. By later, I mean right now. That is much faster than going all the way down the rope and then walking back up. Uh, right now, it's giving all these levels to uh, Poo specifically. That that EXP that the um, this old guy gives you only goes specifically to Poo. Does not go to any other character. Uh, but now we have all our party members, and we didn't necessarily get them in the traditional way, but we have them, and it's great. And we still have more photos to go. There's a couple more in summers. I believe there's two more uh, still yet to get. Uh, there's one here on the beach, and there's one in the far right section of Summers, which is the Toto section. Poo speed matters in Mother 2. It might end up mattering. But here we have another Fuzzy Pickles moment, just a nice little beach photo. Fun fact about all these photos is that the game will keep track of the state of your party when it does take the photo. So in the photo album at the end, uh, Jeff and Paula will be dead uh, because the game will remember that, hey, when you got this photo, they were not alive. And there's one more photo here. And then that completes, that is every single Summers photo. So all these Summers photos, I think believe there's four total in Summers. Once again, Fuzzy Pebbles, everyone. Uh, that completes the Summers section. So now what's gonna be happening here um, I, I mentioned that um, Octo created a copy of, of his save uh, onto the second file slot. This is coming. This is this will come into play a lot. It's actually coming into play right now. So what Octo is going to do is uh, in that save file, it's Ness with a cold with very little HP. He's like already at critical HP. Uh, Octo is going to walk onto the stairs and and completely get on the stairs, but just stand there. 
and then die. And then, uh, when it says, how about giving it another shot, you say no, and you go back to the file select. You're not hard resetting the console, this is a soft reset. This is, this is you saying the game, no, I'm, I want to go back to file select. Well, the game still kind of considers you on the stairs, so you don't have collision in your other save files now. Uh, so we can just walk anywhere. And, and walk anywhere we shall. And this will be happening a lot. So we're gonna, be, we're gonna be picking up the Franklin badge here. There are two Palos on screen, one alive and one not alive. Which one's the real one? You decide. Uh, and, and then what we're gonna be doing after here, getting the Franklin badge here and talking to Paula, what this does is it triggers a, a scripted fight. But you can open the menu before this fight starts and teleport away. And, and for the sake of, of not having the game do any funky business, the game turns off spawns uh, before the scripted fight. And it and it's normally would turn them back on after the scripted fight is over. But we just teleported away from the fight. So spawns are still off and they will remain off for a while. Uh, there's a handful of things that do end up turning spawns back on. Um, so the way the route works is we do as much as we can with spawns turned off. Um, and, and then eventually we run into a point, okay, well, this will force spawns to become back on. So we'll save this for, for as late as we can possibly do it while still also making sure it makes sense time-wise. Um, we're going to be walking out of bounds here. And now, no matter where Octo goes, spawns are going to be turned off. So not only is Octo manipulating all these things, uh, there just won't be anything to worry about, which is actually very, very handy in places like the desert uh, here in Dusty Dunes, because Dusty Dunes is an extremely, extremely... Uh... In terms of spawn plates, there's a lot. It's like a checkerboard pattern of spawn plates. Every other uh, like spawn plate thing is will spawn something, and so uh, what Octo's gonna be doing here. There is a photo here, the, the uh, Black Testament suit photo. There's also a, a present here, just gives you a skip sandwich to left. Uh, this will just be useful later in general. Uh, the polis, that polis, no. So the it's not that policy specifically. It's saving Paula after parking. Uh, you cannot get Sunstroke while, while, uh, the spawns are turned off, actually. So you, you just, the, you don't have to worry about Sun, even though they're sweating right now, um, you just can't get Sunstroke. Uh, and it's because the game is just trying to avoid, uh, you, you can get Sunstroke? I was under the impression you could, but that's good to know. I was under the impression the game wouldn't give you Sunstroke in an attempt to not have you die while spawns are turned off, which, which usually will have a funky result. Mm, so there is a flag though that can turn off Sunstroke, even with the sweating still being in there. Or am I just misunderstanding? This isn't the time for me to have a discussion. Regardless, we're going to be saving in the Monotoli building here. We've picked up a couple more photos. One in Dusty Dunes, one here in Forsyth. We're gonna be saving here. And normally, when you're walking out of bounds, you cannot interact with anything out with, without loading the tile set. So that either means opening and closing the map, uh, or using the soundstone, which uh, only Ness has available to him. There are a few exceptions to this though. And one of the exceptions, um, I believe this is where we'll be seeing it because Monotoli Building is right next to Foresight Museum, which is right next to Pyramid. Uh, one of the exceptions to this is the Hawkeye. And, and in case you're curious, the way Octo knows where he is, is, you know, when you walk over the map, the music is changing and the music is always the appropriate place. So he hears this music, he knows 
I'm in the Foresight Museum. There's only two places that have this song. It's the Summers Museum and the Foresight Museum. And the Summers Museum is not right next to Montel. It's the Foresight Museum. So you can get that photo while still moving out of bounds. And then we're going to be moving down here. Octo is going to be grabbing the Hawkeye, which is right here. It's, you know, just invisible, but it's one of the few things you can interact with while just kind of walking out of bounds. And this puts us here, back into the theater. We have to talk to this lady because this this is what triggers the Mole Cave uh, turning into Mole Cave. And we will be doing Mole Cave later because that is completing Mole Cave spawns a photo. We need to get all the photos. So we have to talk to her at some point. And now is a pretty good time to do it. Now, once again, we're going to be walking to Montoya Building. We'll probably be saving yet again. Is it possible to soft lock out of bounds? Uh, technically, yes. It'd be difficult. Depends on where you like how you, like there are certain there are certain ways you could theoretically soft lock. But if you if you land this glitch correctly, uh, you're you're fine. You can technically walk anywhere, which means you can walk outside of the bounds of the map, and the game. Uh, doesn't necessarily always know what to do. You just kind of walk around into a, a, a general void that is confusing. Yeah, that's what I was exactly what I was thinking as well. We, it's not a thing that we have ever really thought about because we're not trying to just crash the game. We're usually trying to find like what's what can we use this to make things very fast. And we're gonna grab this photo here that now has spawned. Once you get Pooh, uh, once he teleports to your party, uh, this photo trigger spawns. So we're, we're grabbing this, uh, and then we're we're gonna keep on moving because I do not believe there's anything else in Dalam that we have any use for. Side, and we're going to Magnet Hill. Uh, okay, so this is an, a very, very interesting piece of manip. This is this is still uh, being manipped, by the way. So we gave a Holmes hat to Pooh here, uh, and Plague Red of Doom has an attack that uh, will lower your defense. Actually, no, it's the prayer that lowers our uh, we, we manip a gut save here, and then we also equip the, the Holmes hat with Poo. Now, for people who are um, unclear on why we did that, with regular equipment, Poo's defense goes down if he equips it. He has very specific equipment. Um, so what we just did is we equipped the Holmes hat, which lowered his defense, and then we did a prayer, which lowered our defense even more. And there's a defense cal there's a, a, an error in the calculation of how the how this works. And Pooh lost four thousand uh, about four thousand eighty five defense. So he has like negative four thousand defense at this point. And then we put a power shield which reflects physical attacks back at the attacker onto Pooh. Uh, Playground of Doom crit Pooh which did a lot of damage. Half of it reflects back onto it, and then uh, deals like 1,800 damage, and then we have, with one damage bash there, there it is, uh, with one damage bash there, exactly enough to kill Plague Rat of Doom. Yeah, so Pooh's defense, when he equips the Holmes hat, goes to zero. The, the uh, prayer lowered his defense an extra one, so it did. My, so his defense was negative one, 
And then we did another prayer to lower his defense yet again. And the game was just like, well, I don't know. I don't know what's happening anymore. Uh, so it's, it is some type of underflow, but Octo has told me that he, he doesn't necessarily think it's straight up underflow. He thinks it just might be a, a, a miscalculation in the actual uh, math equation. And generally, uh, as confident as confident as I, as, as, I, as I have been about Earthbound, uh, I have, I'm willing to uh, admit that I think the Japanese runners definitely know this uh, all, all this knowledge a lot more, and I'm, I'm willing to trust their what they got what they got to say on it because they've put so much work into it. It's been super cool to see. But it's been, that's one of the coolest pieces of an hip I've, I've ever seen, personally. Uh, which is to have it reflect back onto Plague Rider Doom. And then we used an exit mouse, and it took us back to the Mole Cave. What? That's crazy. Um, so the way the exit mouse works is when you walk through certain doors, certain doors are, are flagged to be like, ah, this is an exit mouse. Um, this is an exit mouse flag. Uh, usually at the start of a dungeon, in the case of Mole Cave, something like that. So it says, okay, so you walk through this door, which means that the next time you're, you, you were to use an exit mouse, it would send you back here. Uh, and because we came into sewers through the back entrance, the, uh, something not great that happened there. Yeah, Octo, I, I think, dropped something or did something incorrect. We might have to just uh, do a little bit of backtracking. We might get to see that. Uh, yeah, Paul is supposed to be killed there. That's what I was wondering, because in, in the PB, Paul is supposed to take mortal damage there. Um, Nip is supposed to, I guess, still carry on thereafter. Uh, so we will get to see the uh, Plague Red of Doom manip again. So you can pay pay closer to attention to when Paula does the second prayer. You can see that Pooh's defense lowers by like 4,096 or something, some crazy amount. How do you insta-die at the beach? Uh, so the, the copied save file, it's Ness by himself with like he has like one eight one or three HP uh, with a cold. Uh, and so what's happening is that uh, when Octo walks onto the stairs, the game does the the tick of damage because he has a cold. It, it does two damage. Uh, every time the the screen flashes red, it's doing two damage with a cold. Uh, and if you don't have the health to survive, if you don't have two health, it just kills you. Uh, so that that's the way that save file was was set up with when when uh, Octo copy copied that save file into slot two. So he's so he's just ready to essentially walk onto stairs and die instantly. That is that is the way uh, that works. All right. So once again, we'll be moving. Big bottle rocket here to Jeff. The Holmes hat goes to Pooh. And we revive Paula because we need the prayer. So the first turn, Paula will survive with a gut save, which means she survives with one HP. No, it was incorrect. Yep. It's not easy. So this is the thing about manipulation. Manipulation is not easy to, to land. Um, on top of all the cursor uh, movements that affect uh, RNG, these randomly moving NPCs also affect RNG. Um, and on top of that, your movement affects RNG. So you need to make sure you move in a very, very specific way. And the issue, it becomes a, a lot harder to, to maintain uh, manipulation when you are walking out of bounds because the same visual cues no longer like you you lose a lot of visual you're just walking through a board 
um, but your movement does matter. Like you, you do need to be somewhat precise in your movement. Um, and so that means there's there's more factors at play here when you're manipulating while walking out of bounds. Which is why it can be so finicky and so difficult to consistently land uh, manipulation. Staying a little bit quieter because uh, Akko can hear me right now. So I just do want to give him the chance to focus a little bit more. Maybe that will help. survive with a gut save so attempt number four this can happen this happened to me in a marathon as well uh, it's never a fun feeling when manipulation is dropping usually uh yeah the manip is rough in general usually it's uh stuff like this section that ends up being the biggest factor because there's just might be an npc off screen that might be moving an extra time and yes, so there are multiple in Dalam. Uh, every time, I mentioned it briefly, uh, randomly moving NPCs will affect RNG. Every time they start and then stop moving, uh, they advance RNG. Uh, so it advance it once when they start, advance it once when they stop. And sometimes they'll do little stutter steps of starting and stopping, <laughs> and they'll update, update RNG by a significant amount. And then if there's two of them on screen, and one of them starts moving and then the other one also starts moving at the same time. It's there's just so many different factors at play um, on top of the fact that you your movement has to be precise and you have to do the exact same number of cursor inputs every single time. It's so it's there's just so many there's so many difficult things. Part of the reason that uh, Octo is moving like around Dalam like this is to try and mitigate as much of that uh, randomly moving NPC stuff as possible. So we'll know if Paula gets a gut save off of that. The crit happens quite often, but the gut saves with the lift. Once again. No worries, Octo. We still we're still making, I think, okay time. This is a very, very difficult part of the run, uh, for sure. And as far as manipulation goes, there's still a couple... This is probably one of the hardest parts of uh, the manip for the, the category in general. Um, and it, it's... So it's very, very understandable. It's, it's such a cool piece of manipulation that I'm still glad we get to show it off in any capacity. Once again, we're going to be getting this photo. Mm. 
I mean, part of the reason this is so important to land is not just to be Plague Rider Doom, but Apollo is supposed to die there in Mole Cave. And I believe the reason for that is to just front load the experience on everyone else because the Apollo getting the experience is not necessary. So we'll see if we got it this time. Noodles. There it is. Okay, so we got the gut safe. And then on this on this next prayer, look at uh Pooh's defense. Went down by four thousand ninety five. So now we we I get Paula to die. We put a power shield on Pooh, which will reflect half the damage back onto the attacker. Who gets crit for three thousand six hundred and fifty one and eighteen hundred and twenty five back. And the extra bash is just enough to do it. And then Ness gets all this experience by himself. All for Ness. And, and as we've already established, we still need to then carry this uh, into Mole Cave. Uh, which the, the, the main issue that will drop Manip here um, from here until Mole Cave is that it actually is an NPC uh, just kind of off screen in Foresight, I believe. Ness's growth rates are pretty good. He's mostly offense oriented and HP oriented. Um, Ness is mostly just a tank. Uh, Ness ends up becoming the fastest character in the game, but that's only after a magic camp. So it's just because he gets so many free stats. Uh, otherwise, his growth is is generally primarily like vitality, offense, defense. Yes, that is a good point. So what happens if, if when you take mortal damage, the screen is shaking and stuff like that. Uh, and there are times where if you were to mash through the text as quickly as possible, then the RNG you get is different as a result. This this is usually very common on, on like Gygus phase one manip. but it can definitely be playing a factor here. And so once again, the last uh, door that Octo walked through that had an exit mouse flag attached to it was the mole cave. It looks like we might have some backup in it here, which is to just, uh, we're gonna save here. We got through this minute, which has ended up giving us a lot more issues the second, third, and fourth time through. We landed it first try, and then unfortunately, we're not able to carry it through uh, onto Mole Cave. So it looks like um, either we're going to be doing Mole Cave later, uh, or we're doing some different. So there's some on the fly uh, just route changes here, probably for marathon safety. But rest assured, we will have to do Mole Cave. It is, it is required. <laughs> I may, or the Manip uh, did not require us to die in the stairs. I was wondering what was going on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thankfully, there's no those guys just moving in place does not affect RNG. This guy does affect RNG, um, but spawns are still turned off. 
Um, so you, as long as you get pi, get by that guy okay, then it's, uh, it's not a big deal. It's, it becomes very easy manipulation to land because your movement can be very consistent here in Mole Cave. There's just a lot of really easy visual cues. You have no enemies to worry about. Um, and so now it just comes down to do you menu correctly here in the fights. So, uh, we mentioned that we need Paula to die, so 98 mortal damage there. And then the big bottle rocket to take out the, the mole. And then we will continue. Why are these moles number three? Oh, because they're the third strongest. Oh, that's easy. That's that's an easy question. That, that guy's the third strongest. That guy right there. And then anytime a new mole comes on the screen, I'm going to say the same thing. I'm going to say that guy right there. <laughs> um, primarily, Paula should be dead so that Jeff gets a lot of this experience. This will help. Um, if if all of Mole Cave isn't manipulated, uh, which I'm not sure it, it all is, it helps with the rest of Mole Cave because uh, Big Bottle Rocket, because Level Up isn't consistent because of Puyas. That makes sense. Um, so it basically it's just for this first one. You want Paula to be dead. You front load the experience on, the, on Ness, Jeff, and Pooh. That's uh, mainly for Jeff because uh, we need to shoot another big bottle rocket at. Uh, actually, we shoot two more big bottle rockets because I think Jeff still has his bottle rockets. Uh, he just has the one. Uh, so the main thing here is that like Jeff's the ability for Jeff to do good damage with uh, bottle rockets and big bottle rockets and multi bottle rockets is based on Jeff's speed. Um, the way it works is that there there are three items, bottle rocket, big bottle rocket, multi bottle rocket. Uh, they all basically stem off of the bottle rocket individual item, which is that uh, it does a calculation that is two times the enemy speed minus Jeff's speed uh, percent chance to miss. Jeff's dead here, which is unfortunate. Yep. <laughs> we we do need Jeff alive. Uh, because we need Jeff to continue getting experience even on top of this because he, he needs to be shooting uh, multi bottle rockets later. 119, which is very, very low. So yeah, as I was, as I was explaining, um, it does two times Jeff speed, uh, two times the enemy speed minus Jeff speed. That, that's the percent chance to miss. Uh, with a bottle rocket and then if it does hit it does anywhere from 90 to 150 damage um, That is the damage range of a bottle rocket uh, and if it misses it obviously does zero damage And a big bottle rocket shoots five of those guys so it does the speed check five times and Then rolls the damage based on the number that hit It'll, you know, it'll do it and then uh, that's how much damage the uh, the big bottle rocket hits for. So in the case of this big bottle rocket, we hit for 532, which is at least four, if not all five hitting, just some of them are on the lower end. Uh, but it is enough to one-shot the, uh, the third strongest mole here. Uh, and then multi-bottle rockets, which we'll be seeing later, multi-bottle rockets shoot 20 uh, bottle rockets. So a multi-bottle rocket's theoretical max damage is 3,000 damage. Now, it will require all 20 to roll 150 damage, which we don't... I don't think we think that that possible RNG string exists currently. Uh, but we've seen some pretty high multi-bottle rocket rolls just through our years of speedrunning this game. Uh, I think the highest I've seen is 2,990 or something close. To, so we've gotten very close to the, the theoretical max. Um, but, you know, it'd just be a cool thing to see that, that 3,000. So we pick up another big bottle rocket. We're giving it to Jeff. And the main thing here is that one, a freeze beta in a, uh, a freeze beta from Pooh and a big bottle rocket from Jeff normally should kill the mole every single time. Unfortunately, the big bottle rocket did 119, which means four of the bottle rockets missed and one of them hit. Which is bad, obviously. 
Uh, you need at least two. You just need two of these bottle rockets to hit. Uh oh. Okay, 626. So, well, <laughs> well more than enough to uh, ensure that we get through. He opened my to change our engine. That makes sense. And so we'll be healing Jeff here, almost for sure. I agree. Uh, and then from the rest of this, it's just going to be freeze beta with poo. Either two freeze betas with a poo or a freeze beta and a rockin' uh, a rockin' beta. A rockin' beta needs to hit for a little high just to, to do it in one turn. Um, but it, it, it is it is your theoretical chance of, of making sure that the fight ends in, in the first possible turn. Uh, we still want we still want the the current kids who are alive. We want them to remain alive. Uh, we have one more big bottle rocket, so VO2. So even uh, if we have a somewhat lackluster BBR here, we should be fine. But we had a pretty decent one. So there's five moles total. They're all the third strongest mole. We've killed three of them now, and we are out of big bottle rockets. Um, normally, mole cave is an annoying part uh, in like a glitchless run. It's an annoying part of the run because of all the spawns. Uh, but as a reminder, spawns are still turned off. So the only thing we have to worry about are these bosses. These bosses count as just uh, you know, scripted enemies that are placed there ahead of time. So solidify here from the uh, freeze would be cool. Uh, solidify from freeze happening is a one in four chance. It's very very useful in the later parts of Mole Cave uh, when you when you do uh, when you are outspeeding the mole consistently. Especially a character like Poo Poo has naturally high uh, very high speed in general. So uh, on average, he will outspeed uh, the third strongest mole almost every single time. Picking up a bomb. Bombs uh, are, are sort of like bottle rockets, and the bombs do not have a chance to miss. They'll thankfully at least always hit. Uh, their damage range is significantly uh, smaller though. I believe a max damage for a bomb is like 135 or something in that range. Possible the bomb might be used in Starman Deluxe Spinip, I'm not sure. Bombs do fixed like fixed damage, so it doesn't matter what the enemy's defense or is or anything like that. So. Exit mouse. And then finally, the mole cave photo. We've all been working towards for all all these all this uh all this struggling with Manip here. It's just, it's just so we can get this one photo, but we're through it. We're, we still have a lot of really cool stuff to show, specifically the Starman Deluxe one. There is an extreme, a uh, very new glitch that was discovered that we will be using to our advantage. Uh, and the manip that we, the spot that we do this in is the Starman Deluxe fight, uh, unless that has changed. But at least, at least in, in Octo's world record run, that's where it happened. It is quite, you, you, you put it better than I could have ever possibly. So it's time to walk out of bounds again. <laughs> and uh, here we are in Happy Happy Village. So we do have to fight Car Painter. Um, the reason for that being we need to rescue Paula from the cabin uh, in order to spawn one of the photo triggers. So we will, we, you know, Manip is still happening here. 
Okay. And then now we can uh, save Paula from the cabin. We already have Paula. It's not to get Paula, it's to get the photo in front of that cabin. think of what's coming next the 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 hard part of like trying to wrap your head around doing commentary for a photo percent run is that photo percent is run so drastically out of order and it just it's 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 hard to be like oh yeah we're clearly gonna go here next it's like when when does this part happen is basically what my brain is doing right now uh so i have to wait for uh, octo to get this photo and then i'll likely be teleporting away hereafter Yeah, so photo percentage has, has gone through significant uh, route changes over the years. I mean, it started off, Aurelix routed it. Um, it was still pretty hard to follow, but it, it's, it, it still followed like a general. If you're curious what the old route looked like, Andy Perfect actually did run it at RPG Limit Break, I believe, in 2017? Or maybe in 2016. Uh, it was one of those two. But the photo percent run that Andy Perfect did in RPG Limit Break um, involved the very, very, like one of the first iterations of the photo percent uh, route. And then uh, we had a runner join the scene not long after that named Classic James, who are, if you're familiar with Earthbound speedrunners, you're familiar with Classic James. Classic James started with photo percent and did a lot of routing and research and classic james came out with a brand new route that it was like significantly faster and involved so many cool exit mouse uh shenanigans and stuff like that it was super sick to see uh and so james really brought it onto the scene and, and and really the photo percent changed a lot even then and then photo percent has just kept on changing more and more and more and Japanese runners have now have changed it even more and more and more as we continue to find new things that help improve you know the speed at which we can complete this game so photo percent is just kind of like all over the place in terms of the route is never even close to being like quite the same like there's chunks of it that sort of remain but they get shuffled around it's so it's interesting to me but it's also hard to keep track of <laughs> just walking through some escalator real quick so you saw uh, octo withdraw some money we're going to be de needing to do some shopping uh, i think this section here uh so we're going to be going to deep darkness we have the hawkeye so we're going to be uh, loading Deep Darkness, the, the tile set. There is a photo in uh, Deep Darkness. And then we use the Hawkeye, uh, because even when you load the tile set of, of uh, Deep Darkness, if you don't use the Hawkeye, the photo does not spawn. Uh, so you cannot get the photo. So that's why we need to grab the Hawkeye. Thankfully, we can grab the Hawkeye while out of bounds, and it's very close to the Foresight Museum uh, photo. And then we'll briefly see Master Barf here. I'm just gonna wave goodbye. And the goal here in Deep Darkness is just to walk as, uh, along these trees as much as possible because even while out of bounds, the swamp still affects your movement speed. Uh, and then now we're in Tenda Village. We're gonna be saving yet again and resetting and going out of bounds. Uh, we just need to grab that one photo there. Uh, one of the th things that probably I think is coming up based on this is we will likely be going to Scaraba, uh, South Scaraba and Dunderman. 
is what I'm thinking. Um, if that's not happening now, it's happening very soon. Uh, but there's there's two photo that's because she three photos in all of Scaraba. There's one in South Scaraba, two in the in North Scaraba. Uh, so we have to get those at some point. Yeah, so we're we're going into Dungeon Man right now. We'll be doing the classic talk to face here at the top. And what this does is this allows us to get Dungeon Man, which is I believe what spawns the uh, the photo in South Scaraba. But we will also be doing some shopping while we have our main man, Dungeon Man, with us. Uh, and that's because there is a, uh, a very convenient vendor right outside the, uh, the exit of uh, Pyramid that sells multi-bottle rockets. So we'll be using that, that guy there to buy some multi-bottle rockets for Jeff, which will be used for Starman Deluxe and a couple other uh, fights where it really is just a big pain to uh, <laughs> try and fight them without something that is dealing thousands upon thousands of damage. So we walk down and right here first. That's because the vendor is over here. The, the photo is off to the left. The teddy bear given, being given to Jeff here and the Holmes hat being given to Jeff here are very important for later. Um, and this bottle of DX water will also be going to Jeff. And then the multi-bottle rockets. And so, as I mentioned before, um, the calculation for whether or not bottle rockets hit is based off Jeff's speed. So normally in Glitchless, what happens is that we get an item called the rabbit's foot, which is... Um, which gives Jeff 40 speed. Uh, so it, it gives him just, since he has a higher chance to hit with MBR, uh, with the multi bottle rocket, it ends up just doing higher damage on average because more of them are hitting based on his higher speed. But in order to get the rabbit's foot in something like photo percent, you would have to be, you can't interact with presence out of bounds. Like you couldn't walk to a present while out of bounds and try to open the present and get the content. Uh, and the rabbit's foot is in Lumine Hall, right next to Electro Spectre, which is the boss of Lumine Hall. So it doesn't exactly help us when when it's there. You could theoretically get it, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be uh, very convenient. But thanks to a new glitch that was uh, discovered actually by a PK Scramble Runner which is a, kind of a variant of a different, uh, an item duplication glitch that we used to use. And yeah, and there's no reason to go to Lumine, like there's no reason to go even to Lumine. Like we, we dropped through the hole of Lumine to get the underworld photo, not the photo, the uh, teleport, I believe. Um, actually, it's not even to get the teleport. It's just because it's one of the required triggers to beat the game. What am I talking about? Um, Getting the backstage pass here is what spawns this Chaos Theater photo. Um, yeah, so the water and DX water are, are items that are meant for Pooh, specifically. He has uh, food items as well, like a bowl of rice gruel uh, is, is a food item for Pooh that is like, because he's a monk, like that's, you know, those are the things that work well on him. And something like a hamburger on Pooh uh, does not really work that well. He, he doesn't. He doesn't like burgers because he's a monk. So the bottle of water and stuff like that is generally just meant to be items used for Pooh. They, they recover psychic points. We're not going to be using them for that purpose. I think we actually bought one to be used later for that purpose. But one of them on Jeff here is not going to be used. Um, uh, as a uh, as a regular bottle of water. And then we do have to um, do this full pencil eraser sequence here. So we just gave uh, Apple Kid the $200. Um, that is because in Peace of Rust Valley, there is a photo. Uh, and the thing that uh, triggers that photo from to spawn is erasing the iron pencil.
So we do need to uh, walk all the way over here. Spawns are still turned off, thankfully. So this cave, normally with sprouts, would be very annoying. Uh, although I think they would run from us at this point. So it wouldn't necessarily be the worst. But we do have to do this sort of necessary uh, story trigger just to make sure that we can get the uh, pencil eraser because we will need to be back here later. Flags are different since at this point normally you wouldn't have Paula. No, the game doesn't. The game only checks to see if you have Paula um, when you walk up to Everdread and when you. Uh, actually, I don't even want to walk up to Everdread. If you go to your house, uh, to Paula's house, the game checks if you have Paula. And Lucky outside of the cast theater checks if you have Paula to give you the backstage pass. But the rest of Tucson just assumes you don't have Paula because you wouldn't normally have a way to get Paula that didn't involve that would involve skipping those things. So it's faster to teleport to Tucson uh, from there and walk down to uh, Apple Kid to get the pencil eraser. Yes, you can walk that close to Everdread and not trigger the fight. It feels that way. All right, and now we're teleporting to four side. So likely here going to be um, another save. I think it's in the four side hotel, if I recall correctly. It looks like it. And we're gonna be heading out of bounds yet again. As a general reminder, we still have to get the two Scarab photos we have yet to get. There's one in the Scarab Bazaar, and there's one right in front of the uh, pyramid. Uh, and then uh, after that, we will be getting... Uh, we will be fighting Starman Deluxe. So I just want to make sure that this is the Scarab sequence here. Um, I think it goes Scaraba, Luma and Hole Drop, and then Starman Deluxe. This is Monkey Cave. There's the inside now. Or are we doing Starman Deluxe now? Okay, so we're doing Starman Deluxe now. So uh, let's talk about the, the, the new glitch. So we have a bottle of DX water, a teddy bear, and a Holmes hat here on Jeff. So what's gonna happen here, this teddy bear uh, is very important and uh, Octo moved the, the items to Jeff's inventory in a very specific order, in a way that the the last items in, in the slots would be teddy bear, Holmes hat, bottle of DX water. As long as those two things are, are after uh, the teddy bear, uh, that that's what's important because what's going to happen here is in the middle of battle octo is going to tell jeff to equip the holmes hat and what's going to happen is uh during that time bef right before jeff equips the holmes hat the teddy bear is going to die which shifts the items slot here uh it's, it shifts the location of, of which item slot it's in So the teddy bear is above, the Holmes hat is here. So the teddy bear, what's gonna happen is the Holmes hat is gonna go where the teddy bear is, and the bottle of DX water is gonna go where the Holmes hat is. And then the teddy bear dies, the teddy bear is fucked, and then we equip the Holmes hat. But did he equip the Holmes hat? Because the game said we equip the Holmes hat, but I assure you, we did not equip the Holmes hat. What happens is the game thinks we equipped the Holmes hat, but if we were to actually look at our inventory, which I do not believe we still can do because I still think there's manipulation that is happening after this. Um, if we were to look at our equipment right now, uh, in Jeff's body slot, which is normally where the Holmes hat would go, um, or it's in the other slot, it's, it's in... Regardless, in wherever the Holmes hat would go, uh, the bottle of DX water is now being equipped there instead. 
So Jeff is wearing a bottle of, of Deluxe water currently. Um, and you might think that is a strange thing to do. Yeah, you can see it's equipped there. Bottle of DX water. <laughs> yep, on, on, on the body. And what that does is that gives Jeff 40 speed, just like the rabbit. So now Jeff, with the bottle of DX water equipped, is much, much faster. Uh, probably because he's so hydrated, to be honest. But, and then we use the exit mouse. It sends us back over here. We get to erase the iron pencil and then get this photo. So this is why you need to stay hydrated. How did they get X water into a bottle? That's the real question. <laughs> Uh, and so with with the bottle of dx water now on jeff it gives him 40 speed which allows us to use uh, multi-bottle rockets with a lot more effectiveness it means they will hit for much higher um and in the cases of you know manipulated fights it makes it you can get some some pretty 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 juicy mbr rolls so once again we had that photo there and then we'll be teleport beta here to omit I believe here we're just going to be saving. Either that or we're picking up an exit mouse. Actually, no, we're just going to be saving. We cannot easily pick up an exit mouse anymore through a net. Because we know, because we glitch out of one now. So we'll be saving and moving out of bounds yet again. We'll be going on our wacky out of bounds adventure. Because we still have other photos to get, if you recall. If you, if you have a fantastic memory of all the photos, you recall them. We haven't really gotten any of the three photos. There's two that I can think of offhand. There's the one in front of uh, Moki Well in Saturn Valley. There's the Grapefruit Falls one. So we still have a handful of photos left to go. And this is the uh, the rundown shack photo here in Onet. So this is the, the shack that you would normally need. I believe it's seventy five hundred dollars. You need a lot of money to uh, buy to get this rundown shack. And there they photo it. So. Uh, we just walk straight out of bounds. Yeah, this is all normal. You can see sometimes you're walking out of bounds. Uh, we're in the Onet library right now, so getting the Shyness book is one of the few things you can interact with with Out of Bounds as well. That view is great. We're here in Grapefruit Falls now. We're going to be grabbing the Grapefruit Falls photo, which I had just previously mentioned. So once again, another great opportunity for some fuzzy pickles. So everyone, please, please oblige. Please humor me. Give me some fuzzy pickles, y'all. And one of the things that, that will probably be important to get here is the Saturn Valley photo. Not the photo, the Saturn Valley teleport. Um, because we, we you do need to head back to Saturn Valley to complete the game. Um, e even just separate from needing to get the photo in front of Milky Well. Uh, having the Saturn Valley uh, teleport is just... It's, it's basically required, even in the, the fully which category which if you're curious what that run looks like um then you, you know just keep watching the marathon because there is the mother two any percent run later being run by another japanese runner named by shao and that will uh it will use some of the same things you've seen here but be a lot more expedited it's just you know just it's the goal is beat gaigas beat the game so we're saving here in Saturn Valley. We're going to be walking out of bounds once more. We still have much more out of bounds shenanigans to do. Right, let me think which photos are remaining. I still think we do need to drop through the whole... 
unless I missed that already. But that does need to happen. There is a photo here in the throne room as well. It's funny, they'll, they'll turn to the photo man, now that you mentioned that. And then they will turn, they will turn back. You always gotta be facing north. Alright, so we got the scarab of photos here. So there's one here in the bazaar and there's one here in front of the pyramid. Scarab of Bazaar is a, an area that I wish we got to spend more time in because it's one of my favorite Earthbound songs, actually. As soon as you uh, get past that little fence there, the like, gate, it changes to this uh, Scarab of Music. Which isn't bad, but I like the Bazaar music much better. So that completes all, all these scarab photos. We have one still left in Onet. We have two in three. What else are we missing? And if you notice, instead of using uh, teleport beta, if, if Octo can help it, uh, Octo is gonna be using teleport alpha. That's because it's faster to use Teleport Alpha by about two seconds. Um, unless you're in Underworld. Uh, if you're in Underworld, then it's faster by about like five seconds. <laughs> like it's just significantly faster if you're in uh, Underworld. So in a speed run, you want to... Uh... It's four seconds normal. Interesting. I had timed it at two, but I'd be interested to see the difference. But in under in underground uh, underworld, it is it is significantly faster. Uh, so if you if you have to teleport out of underworld, which we do have to do at least once, um, you want to do the alpha. It can be kind of difficult though, but it's worth it to go for it. It's a, it's a lot. It's enough time saved that I think it's one of those things that people should learn. They're, they're super serial. They're super serial about cutting them seconds. Yeah, so this is going to be... We're going to be falling down the uh, Lumen Hall hole here. Uh, there is no photo associated with this. This is just one of the required um, triggers to beat the game. What this does is it puts uh, Dr. and Donuts in Saturn Valley. And then the other required uh, thing to uh, complete the game is we're going to have to beat Ness's Nightmare, and then and then go back through, um, go back into the Cave of the Past through the uh, Phase System. Those, all three of those things are required to happen in order for the game to not freak out. Because you could you could hypothetically, because we can walk out of bounds, we could hypothetically out of bounds straight to Gygus right now. Like we could just do that. Um, but the game isn't set up to finish the game yet. What happens is when you go back in time to through in the phase disorder, uh, the game sets up the prayer sequence that is required to defeat Gygus. So what happens is that you can get through phases one and two of Gygus, and then as soon as you get to the prayer sequence, the game just kind of softlocks because it, it cuts to summers, and then the Runaway Five is not there, and it's like, oh. Uh, what do I do? And it just kind of just sits there. It doesn't really do anything. <laughs> so now we have to fight Belch. Uh, if you recall, we do not have the Jar of Fly Honey. Um, and the Jar of Fly Honey is required to deal damage to Master Belch. Um, you can shoot infinite uh, multi-bottle rockets at Belch. He will not die. Uh, he does not take damage. But he is susceptible to instant kills. And PSI Flash Beta has a 1 in, uh, it's either 1 in 16 or 1 in 8. I think it's 1 in 8, uh, to instant kill an enemy. So you just Flash Beta him, and he just instantly dies. 
It's the only way to kill Belch without the Jar of Fly Hunt. In the case of manipulation, it's a one in one chance. Yeah, one in eight. Yeah, and that, that chance goes up. So in with Flash Gamma, I think it's two and eight, and then Flash Omega three and eight. If I recall correctly. For instant kill. But that was required to get this photo and then also then climb down this ladder. Uh, Killing Belch spawns that ladder. And there is a phone here that you can use. As a kid, I didn't think you could use that phone. I literally thought, like, that thing of tea there above the ATM, I thought they were just like, oh, we want this phone on display. And then one time I saw somebody use the phone, and I'm like, oh, I'm stupid. Of course you can use the phone. <laughs> yeah, and Belch has 50% flash resistance, so it's manipulated, but... It becomes harder to manipulate because there's a chance that then the, the game has to determine whether or not the flash even works before it starts rolling those one in eights. You know what I mean? And the same the same is true of of Ness's nightmare, which uh, if if we don't do something similar, we might just uh, multi bottle rocket Ness's nightmare in photo percent, but in any percent, which will be happening at about midnight Eastern. Um, we, we use Flash to, uh, defeat Ness's Nightmare. Escape Sandwich Deluxe here just to move faster. It's just better. Flash and Photo as well. Picking up the Magic Camp back here just gives Ness some extra offense. If we're using Flash, this means this is all still being manipulated. Uh, in, in the case of Sea of Eden, uh, it would have to be manipulated. You could theoretically get through unmanipulated uh, with all four party members like this. It's very difficult when you, like, when you have a lot of party members to get past these Krakens without taking the fight. Um, but you see Octo doing some inputs here, and that gets that Kraken to just kind of go off into his own little corner. So th those Krakens will normally beeline it straight to you like that, but thanks to manipulation, we're able to get through and we'll be using Flash Beta here. So the Shield Beta here, this is just to uh, advance RNG, the use of items like that. It's just because otherwise, uh, Octo would have to use, like, it would just be too many inputs, it's faster to just, like, have a dead turn. Um, and now Ness gets all the solo experience here from Ness's Nightmare, on top of the fact that Ness was, is also just going to get a ton of free stats now. But in the case of photo percent, photo percent time ends uh, like the actual like it's post uh, post Gaius death. You walk back home. The last photo we get will actually be getting after Gaius. Yeah, Gaius counts as 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 one of the photos. You get one photo from, from beating Gygus. Uh, but there is one more photo that you get after beating Gygus, which is really, you'd think it'd be one of the first photos we get, but it makes sense why we leave it to the end. Yeah, just a, just a, you know, a casual 200,000 experience. Um, so it only splits uh, Ness's Nightmare, the actual N Ness's Nightmare experience. The 200k experience is all Ness and only this. Same with the stats. Uh, it's only changed in Scramble. PK Scramble changes it so that uh, everyone gets all that experience. And also, yes, if, if you have... This is potentially seizure-inducing. So be careful uh, for those who might be susceptible.
Thanks for the call, Leslie. I appreciate it. So the game is going to automatically teleport us here, teleport us here to uh, Saturn Valley. We still have to get three photos, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so it, it would it does take it does take a long time splitting that experience. It's part of the reason why uh, well it's definitely the reason why we the the manipulation here was specifically um, meant to have everyone but Ness die. It's because it's so much experience that nightmare drops that everyone the, the amount of levels that it would take, it would add minutes of just extra tech smashing, which Octo is using turbo right now because it is allowed. Um, but it's still, it would still just add a minute. So we need the meteorite piece, which is in Dark Onet. Uh, but we're not done with the game yet. We have still the three photos to get, and it's very likely, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, that we will be getting those photos and then out of bounding to the meteorite piece um, to like Liar Exaggerate's house, I believe. And then just being like right at the top. Uh, spawns, I believe, turn back on after. I think at this point, spawns are back on. The game will have turned them back on. Yeah, so we have uh, these these three photos here. There's two to get total. There's one by this uh, gravestone right here, and there's one by the tent in the middle of town. Uh, fuzzy pickles. Look at this photographic genius. Teleporting to Tenda, that means we're going to be uh, giving the Book of Shyness because there is a photo here. That's correct. I almost forgot about this photo. You have to give this guy the Shyness Book. Uh, and then when upon completing giving them the Shyness Book, a photo happens. And you also get to name your player. Uh, you, the one holding the controller. Technically, the first time you name you name your player would be in Summers. Um, this is the game. Just just making sure. Let's see the type of message uh, Octo has for us. Another series marathon. Very nice. <laughs> no, not in a marathon. A bag of Dragonite is useful, uh, almost certainly for Gygus. Bag of Dragonite, you turn into a dragon and you do a bunch of damage. Uh, it's based the amount of damage it does 
uh, can be mitigated by fire resistance because you are a dragon, you can breathe fire. Uh, so Gygus, you know, it doesn't do like a ton of damage, damage to Gygus, but it does like a good 200, 300, something like that. And the Gygus is not weak to Dragonite, but Gygus when he has, so phase one, so phase one Gygus you have uh, heavily armored Pokey and then Gygus you need to deal 2000 damage to heavily armored Pokey. Phase two Gygus you need to then deal 2000 damage to Gygus there. So anything that can deal, you know, a good chunk of, uh, of damage will always help in the Gygus fight. It does, it does around... 250 to 3. It can do like 250 to 400, I think is the max roll it can do on Gygus. On average, it will do in the 200s. Uh, Jeff doesn't have enough speed to even have. He has, a, he has an 100% chance to miss. Still. It won't be using Gygus? Interesting. So if it's not being used on Gygus, then it, the, the damage roll will be much higher. Uh, because the reason it doesn't do like a ton of damage to Gygus, because as I mentioned, it, was, it, it does 800 damage base, but uh, if they have fire resistance, then it mitigates that damage. So if we're not using it on Gygus, it means that we'll likely be using it on Pokey. Uh, I think Bag of Dragonite. I forget if you can target with it or if it just randomly targets. Because the only time we use it in a speedrun outside of uh, Photo Percent, which I don't currently actively run, we use it uh, for Ness's Nightmare. They don't. You don't buy the house, we out of bounds into the house. But we have already done that. We have gotten every single photo except for, for two. One of them is the Gygus photo, and one of them is the photo right in front of Ness's Nightmare. You only need to work, walk a certain distance there to get the uh, faces sort of to spawn here. You talk to Apple Kid, and then you talk to Ann Donuts, and we'll be heading back to the past. This is once again another uh, seizure warning, I would say, or flashing lights warning. Um, so if, if you're someone who would be sensitive to flashing lights, I would say uh, when you hear the drilling stop, <laughs> then you're good to go. Oh, department store as well. Good, good catch, James. Good catch. Of course, James would be the one to, to instantly catch which one has not been uh, picked up. I had already mentioned previously uh, Classic James being a the they s cut their teeth on Earthbound speedruns with photo percent and massively rerouted the category when they first joined the community and really helped shape the category into what it is today as like a at a base level. Oh, you should be on the mic here, James. Okay, flashing lights. I would say I've stopped. So Gygus battle is very unstable. Octo is here saying in the chat. Uh, manipulation here. Um, if we are doing manipulation, it is probably very precise manipulation. Uh, and there's a lot that can happen here in this Gygus fight as a result. If it's not manipulated and it's just like we're just kind of going into it, then it's a crazy scary fight, but I imagine we're manipulating. Yeah, so we're communicating, we're going to save, and we're going to walk out of bounds. Uh, walking out of bounds to Gygus and maintaining manipulation has always been kind of difficult. Um, spawns are back on. We turned spawns uh, off earlier in the run. But at this point, we've we've hit enough uh, story triggers that it's, they're now back on. The game has just naturally turned them back on. Uh, and so what happens is when you're walking out of bounds, the the enemies can still spawn. 
Saturn Valley in particular, that also is true, yeah. Um, when you're walking out of bounds, uh, these enemies that, that might be spawning, their movement affects RNG, which is why uh, Octo is doing inputs here to make sure that these enemies do not uh, spawn so that they aren't just moving out and about and really making a muck with the RNG. Uh, but as AI mentioned, um, the Gygus instability mostly is related to uh, the prayer sequence, which is when the game cuts to when you do the prayer and it cuts to the scene, uh, there are randomly moving NPCs on screen. And because of the way photo, photo percent gets some extra story triggers that any percent doesn't get, there's an extra moving NPC here in the Saturn Valley prayer. Um, and so as a result, the, the Gygus fight is far more unstable. Um, it's, it's hard to be consistent at that point. The Frank player prayer is always a problem, uh, but with with Turbo, it becomes less of an issue. Frank prayer, the issue, so the way we dealt with Frank prayer is we would look at the damage value of the, of the amount of damage that guy gets would take thereafter, and then the yeah, beating belt spawns the Saturn. Yeah. Um, we have like a, a flow chart based on like of manipulation based on like what we need to do. So this bottle of DX water giving uh, Jeff extra speed here is going to help this MBR do a lot more damage. This normally would not deal uh, 1128 in photo percent, but and now we're setting up to use um, onto phase two this. Uh, yeah, that's that's what James said. Is it so? The Saturn Valley prayer is the first prayer of uh, of phase three, and what happens is it just says Gygus's defenses become unstable. You have no information. The Frank prayer, as mentioned previously, also has a lot of moving NPCs, but it does damage. So you get to look at the damage and go, if this damage, then do these inputs. But with the Saturn Valley prayer, you're just like, I really hope. Wow. We're going to be equipping the Magic Camp Bat, and then we're going to be doing another Star Storm Omega. Or if you've been paying attention, it does say just Omega. That's because who never got Star Storm out of So he just casts PSI Omega. Valley Manip won't work on Switch or Virtual Console for some reason. I feel like it has to do with, with uh, lag animation. But that's just a guess. Wow, what a prayer. What a Gygus turn to instantly kill the rest. Like, that is the most optimal thing to possibly happen. You want everyone else to be dead here. Uh, so, there's there's NPCs moving off screen here currently. Uh, you might be able to see one moving, potentially. He's kind of to the south here. Um, but the main thing is, you have no feedback really from the game. Uh, whether or not the Manip stayed after uh, this prayer here. So. It seems like a really rough PK flash. That PK flash is definitely manipulated. Um, it's 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 faster to have everyone but Paula uh, no longer alive. And if you're, when you're manipulating it, as long as the manipulation holds, then there's nothing to fear. The issue will become now this turn. So Octo is going to do his inputs, and we're going to see if it works or not. That's an empty turn. There's a frame perfect scroll. Empty turn might mean that we're okay. Yeah. We'll know based on this turn, I would say. Uh, because even like if the manip dropped, there's still a chance that like the inputs might give you somewhat of an empty turn to start with. 
Oh, the runner command is not. Alright, it looks like we're okay for the guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is very far into the run. So, you know, in a marathon situation, it's, at the very least, it's, it's nice here that, like, if it were to drop, we could just try it again. It's not too big an issue. We're, we're mainly here to show off these, uh, these runs here and stuff like that. Uh, in world record attempts, if uh, you miss the frame perfect tech scroll and the minute drops, well, you just uh, you gotta reset your run. But how fast is Paula here? Paula probably has. She's level one, so I think she has two speed. Does she have any experience at all? I think she's level one. I guess has 80 speed. We're, mani we're manipulating Gygus doing nothing. So Gygus has like one of four attacks he can do. And one of those attacks is do nothing. Uh, one of them is PSI Thunder. One of them is PSI Freeze. Another is PSI Flash. Uh, it just says you cannot understand the true form of Gygus' attack. But those are, those are what the attacks are. AC missed frame perfect, and he used one of them this time. That's still insane to like know that you missed a frame perfect and then have a backup ready. It's so impressive to see. Also, I apologize to uh, stream quality. Uh, it, it is about to take a, uh, a sudden dive in uh, stream quality, and it has nothing to do with any restreamer or anything, it has everything to do with my main man Jengis on screen. Uh, because when we get to the final, final phase, uh, basically there's just, there's too many pixels next to each other of like drastically different color that, that there's no bit rate that can possibly contain the uh, amount of of just BS on screen. Yeah, you'll see the down. If you get the frame perfect, you won't see the arrow at all. So if you see if you see the down arrow on on the text uh, scroll here, so you can see here on this Frank prayer, these two moving NPCs um, are normally an issue. Uh, Octo did get a frame perfect text scroll here. Um, you could tell because you never saw the down arrow appear. You have to actually mash the one text. Uh, now, the frame perfect text scroll doesn't really matter nearly as much here on, on Frank. Uh, it matters more on the Saturn Valley one, it sounds like. So, this is the uh, seventh prayer. We have two more to go. Time does not end here at the end of Gygas, though, because we still have one. We have two more photos after this. Uh, as James mentioned, we have the uh, department store uh, photo, which is the Foresight department store. Uh, and we have uh, the one directly in front of this house, which is Ness's house. And I believe that's the last two. And I can't, but it's possible I'm missing at least like maybe one other just in the back of my mind. Uh, it's, it's hard to keep track of this route just because they're all over the place. And you do them in such a weird and sporadic order. So bit right here does not help. Unfortunately, I think stream quality takes a dip right here. Um, so just uh, just bear bear with us as as we wait for Gaius to, to wait for Gaius to uh, to be ended. Um, you're right, James. So basically all the four side, every four side one except for the one by Monopoly, we still have remaining. And that's y'all who are praying right now. All of us, really. 
Mother Series Marathon kept praying. You dang right I did. <laughs> me? Little old me? Ah, that's what it is. So getting the diamond turns spawns back on. Museum department store home. Alright, Octo super confirming those are the only remaining uh, photos left. Guy gets attacking this part of the minute. So guy gets attacked in there on that last turn. It's looks spooky, but uh, guy gets the flash attack to do it. And so what I believe is being explained is that uh, one of two RNG values would happen there uh, during that last section, uh, and it was hard to tell or impossible to tell. Um, so the minip they have uh, takes an attack. It, it does the same number of inputs to get to prey. Uh, and the attack is unavoidable, but you will not be killed by the attack no matter what the RNG value it lands on is. Yep. So you could hypothetically try and go like, it's one of two RNG values. And so there's probably a set of inputs that would for one of them, give an empty turn, but if you're on the other one, then it ends up being a turn where you die, which is so late into the fight that you don't want that to happen. So they just, they're just taking a slightly slower route uh, in order to make sure that no matter what the amount of, no matter which of the two RNG values, it's the same number of inputs, and no matter the result, you, you get through the, the turn. Yeah, the, the manip between Earthbound and Mother 2 is like, there's these weird, there's these weird differences <laughs> that, um, in how RNG advances in like very, very specific scenarios, uh, that it's like, it's just very strange. Uh, and sometimes it, it seems to be even based on like, if you're on this RNG value at this time, and you walk through this door, then it advances RNG more even. Though like in a different RNG value, you wouldn't, it's very strange. RNG works, it's, we still don't fully every, understand everything uh, about how RNG is calculated in this game and stuff like that. Although we know a lot more now than we did in the past. And we, we, we're pretty, we're pretty knowledgeable, but there's still just some weird, like, just, you just have question marks, you're just confused, you're just like, why? Why? Teleport Alpha to save time here. Very nicely done. So we go to Foresight. As we mentioned, there are uh, several Foresight photos that we still have yet to get. But the nice part is uh, we get this nice post... post-Gaius music because the game is kind of wrapping up. It kind of just expects you to go home. So one of the first three, so one of four remaining. We have this bridge one. There's one inside the Foresight department store. 
and there's one directly outside of the uh, Forsyth Museum. And we have to walk a little bit farther to the left here because we do need to get the diamond. Because in order to get into the uh, Foresight Department store, you need to give the diamond to the left. means we do get a Runaway 5 show. The only Runaway 5 show of the entire run. So if you're a Runaway 5 fan, look forward to this. Some runaway The legs emo with the Moogle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we need to head inside of a uh, Foresight Department Store. There's a photo directly at the top. And photo comes first. <laughs> <laughs> right? The, that move is schmoovin'. Like, it's so good. <laughs> to uh, walk up this escalator and then down this escalator because this guy forgot the memo which I love the idea of this dude like he's just not he wasn't cc'd on the email chain like Gygus has been defeated <laughs> so he's still like he's still doing Gygus stuff the guy is not around you're like wait what, what do you mean dude <laughs> he just has not been uh, informed <laughs> Get there, you're like, I already beat Gagas. He's like, No, you didn't. And you're like, No, dude, like, I definitely did. <laughs> He's like, The, the all powerful cosmic destroyer, you beat him? <laughs> then why did I kidnap this girl? <laughs> so the 
bag of Dragonite will be used on the department store spook here. Uh, does not have enough health to survive both a bag of Dragonite and even just a bash at this point. Yeah, 199. If you're lucky enough, probably the bag of Dragonite can one-shot him. Master Gygus will avenge me. <laughs> Got bad news for you, buddy. <laughs> oh, man, this is awkward. <laughs> oh, He's gonna avenge me for sure. There's no way you beat him. <laughs> and this is the second to last Fuzzy Pickles. There is one more. We just need to head home. And time will be coming up shortly. Uh, it's we will be talking to our mom. So I will call for time uh, when it is appropriate. He still lives in their heart, maybe? It's a good point. You know what? The guy just never dies. Where's Paula? Ooh. Bye. I don't know. <laughs> she can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, she just owns Monopoly Building. <laughs> and this is the last photo. So this is the last Fuzzy Pickles the run so please everyone give me your best fuzzy pickles enjoy this this final photograph time is coming up shortly oh no <laughs> who are you talking to Ness? Right there. So that's the end of the run. I believe the timer still runs. 2.11.22. Yes. Um, still underestimated. You, even with some uh, some manip troubles here at the, you know, in the middle of the run, we, Octo was still able to pull it through well ahead of estimate. Fantastic run, uh, Octo. Thank you so much uh, for showing that up. I think it's such a cool run, such a cool category. And yeah, you can have Paula meet the fan. Theoretically, not right now. Mother Series Marathon, of course. And we've had Mother 1 and now Earthbound, aka Mother 2. So, right after this, uh, coming up, you know, in some some minutes very soon, Mother 3. Uh, so, if you're a big Mother 3 fan, definitely check out the run. It's going to be uh, being run by Gearless Robot, who's been running Mother 3 for a very, very long time. We've always uh, done an excellent Just waiting on setup to uh, to arrive. So that we 
to move forward with a uh, level 3 run. In the meantime, I mean, I love the Earthbound credits, so I'm, I'm super down for this to continue to play until we can get a uh, word from, from Tech that, uh, that we can move on. <laughs> Why did someone drop this girl off? <laughs> nice part about photo percent uh, you can verify all the photos you got here at the ending sequence so um, enjoy smiles and tears and we get to see the uh, reward of all the photos we got
acontecer.